John Paul Jones is known as the founder of the American Navy. Not many people know that John Paul Jones was actually from Scotland. Is it, uh, is it racist to do the accent? I live as Oh, okay, I'll stop then. We're going to look at the incident that turned a questionable man into a legend. The Battle of Flamborough Head. I'm Brian Pilchard, and I love history. Using my skills in effects, clothes, and disguises, I'm gonna take you on a journey back in time for an adventure in Super History! 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 John Paul was born July 6th, 1747, and joined the Merchant Navy when he was 13. For two years, he served on a slaver, but quit because he hated the slave trade. We're not doing a slave sketch. Deplorable. In 1770, John Paul almost suffered from a mutiny. You have to pay us, John. We can't keep doing this for free. I think I have a solution. The man he had whipped died not long after and was no ordinary seaman. He was an ex-explorer and related to an influential Scottish family. You've had it. You've had it, you abusive slag. Not long after, Jones faced another mutiny. You have to pay us, John. You can't expect us to keep doing this for free. Well, whipping didn't work. I know. John Paul was going to be tried in an admiral's court, where his first victim's family was influential. You're done for, John Paul. You'll be sorry. Yeah? Well, when I get some advice from the governor, we'll see who's sorry then. Oh, here he is now. Don't even pack. Leave the area and change your name right now. John Paul changed his name from John Paul to John Paul Jones. He left it all behind and moved to America. In 1775, John Paul Jones volunteered for the newly founded Continental Navy. During his service, he achieved many things, including taking command of the USS Providence, commanded the USS Ranger. Yes, Captain, absolutely, Captain. You're a genius, Captain, asshole. Took many prize ships, raided Canso in 1776, and raised the first US ensign over a naval vessel, the Grand Union Flag. This is for you, sir. <laughs> you know, the sailors don't have to show their appreciation of me with farewell cards like this, but in its own naive way, it is kind of touching. It's a petition to get you fired, sir. The men couldn't stand you. In 1779, Jones went to the French to acquire a new ship. Hi, John Paul Jones here, the guitar player. No, the American naval captain. Oh, never heard of you. I'd like to acquire a battleship. Oh, I've got some battleships in the shipyard over there. But you can't have them. Well, you can have a merchant naval ship. And as for the cannons, hmm, maybe you can have a look in the scrapyard bin. Bobby, there's someone at the bloody rubbish. The modified merchant navy ship was called the Bonhomme Richard. Using it as a flagship, John Paul Jones was put in charge of a Franco-American squadron. By the 23rd of 1778, the squadron consisted of five ships, one of them a frigate named the Alliance, captained by a Frenchman, Pierre Landis. I've got high hopes for myself in this war. I'm gonna be the Lafayette of the ocean. Excuse me, Mr. Landis. You'll be serving under Commodore John Paul Jones. <laughs> what? The Battle of Flamborough Head occurred on the 23rd of September, 1779. John Paul Jones led his fleet to intercept a British supply convoy of 40 vessels. The British convoy was being escorted 
by the HMS Serapis, captained by Captain Richard Pearson. That's John Paul Jones's ship over there! And the Countess of Scarborough, captained by Captain Thomas Piercy. I just wanted to say thank you for putting me in the video. Pearson and Piercy put themselves between the Franco-American squadron and the merchant fleet. To keep up the confusion, John Paul Jones sailed towards the British, flying the British flag. Sarah goes against all articles of war. Now it was fine. May I, sir? It's 6.30 p.m. The Bonhom Richard and Serapis come within pistol shot range. John Paul Jones hauls the English flag down <whistles> and orders the cannons to fire. The Serapis fires too. As Jones fires, two of his 18-pounder cannons blow up. Ah! Oh, the cannons have blown up! Why? Probably because I got them out of a bin. Jones recognises that his cannons will not win him the battle, so he focuses on getting close and boarding. For the next 50 minutes, the ships manoeuvre around each other. The Bonhomme Richard trying to board, and the Serapis trying to deliver broadsides. The Palace engages the Countess of Scarborough. I'd also like to say thanks for putting me in the video. Sorry, we couldn't find out who you were. Meanwhile, the Alliance watches as the Bonhomme Richard and Serapis fight. They're getting kind of pummeled, sir. Shouldn't we be following John Paul Jones to battle? No, no, we'll stay here and observe. As the ships engage, the merchant fleet sails to safety. Jones and Pearson continue to fight. Both ships were locked together. Have you struck your colours? Struck? I've not yet begun to fight! The Serapis, using cannon to shoot the Bonhomme Richard, and the Bonhomme Richard using marines in the rigging to clear the personnel on the Serapis decks. The Countess of Scarborough and the Palace continue to fight until Captain Piercy sees the Alliance approaching. His ship and crew, badly disabled, surrenders due to the unmanageable odds. Pierre Landis sets his sights on the battling Serapis and Bonhomme Richard. Well, it looks like they're probably going to surrender. Let's go and help them. John Paul Jones's ship. <laughs> Good. Keep firing. Keep firing. More on. We'll see who the Lafayette of this battlefield is. <laughs> Lafayette? Who? Lafayette. What? Broadsides delivered to the Bonhomme Richard hold the ship below the waterline. The ex-merchant ship took on water and began to sink. John Paul Jones had to convince the prisoners to pump the water out. Yeah, all right, we'll do it. At about 10 p.m., sailor William Hamilton starts dropping grenades onto the Serapis deck. One of them lands on gunpowder and cartridges. The explosion is huge. The Serapis catches fire. The Serapis crew organised a boarding party. which was pushed back. Lieutenant Richard Dale swings aboard the Serapis with a boarding party. I'm gonna do the rope swing. Anyone looking? No? With a burning ship, and to avoid any more bloodshed, Captain Pearson surrenders. There's no need for any more bloodshed. A 
ship's actually on fire. We could use a hand with that. Thank you. Uh, actually, my ship's sinking, so um, if you hadn't surrendered, you probably would have won. Anyway, let's get on to the fire. That sounds, sounds good. Water pumping in the Bonhomme Richard continued until the next day when they gave up. John Paul Jones started the battle commanding the Bonhomme Richard and ended it commanding the Serapis. The Serapis was so damaged it was scrapped not long after. For his actions in the battle, John Paul Jones was awarded the title Chevalier by the French and a gold medal by the Continental Congress. And what was the point of that? Pearson was knighted. Ah, oh, double standard. Last job I did badly, I had to give the money back. Yeah, and I was fired. We did sink the flagship. And we defended the convoy. And awarded three special coconut cups. In the modern US Navy, Ships have been named John Paul Jones and the Bonhomme Richard. There you go, John Paul Jones. After all this, he became a rear admiral in Russia and uh, a bunch of other stuff happened. It was very unsavory, you can look it up yourself. Uh, that's not what this video is about. It's about the Battle of Flamborough Head. We've shown it and uh, we're ending the video now. Uh, if you did like it, please subscribe to the channel and give us a thumbs up. We've also got merchandise that sucks. Thanks. Another video done. Oi, Buster! Stu McConaughey's the name and history's the game. I just watched your video on John Paul Jones and it was bloody crap. Some of the uniforms in that video were incorrect. The French Navy uniform actually didn't look like that. The tunic was completely wrong. That was a military tunic. What about the hat? The hat was fine. The hat was good. The British captain uniforms were wrong. They had white facings and they wouldn't have had two epaulettes. You know, we do the epaulette thing just in case we have to flip the shot. Yeah, well I know your game. You also said sailors dropped bombs on the deck and showed footage of a marine. Yeah, whoops. Were the grenades okay? Oh yeah, the grenades were accurate. What about uh, John Paul Jones's crustacean? The crustacean was the best thing in the video. Thank goodness, we spent all of our ad revenue on that crustacean. You know, you could actually help us make the uniforms more accurate by donating to our Patreon. Typical stew.